Hi, I'm Charlene Bowden. Welcome to It's Just Us. Joining me is Mr. Kevin Ramsey and Ms. Maisha McQueen. We'll be talking about the play, Chasing Them Blues, but also want to give you a chance to get to know these two wonderful professional people in the theater world. So welcome to It's Just Us. Thank I'm glad so to have much. you join Thank me. You. Great to be here. Let's start by discussing your artistic journey. Um, I don't know, let's start ladies first, if that's okay mm -hmm. with you. Share your journey with us. Um, I started, I uh, grew up in Atlanta. I started performing at a very young age with a uh, theater company called the Youth Ensemble of Atlanta, mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. Um, I also went to Tri-Cities High School of the Visual and Performance. Arts. Okay. Um, I was mentored by, by Mr. Freddie Hendricks, mm -hmm. um, Debbie Barber, Don Axum, um, a lot of professionals in Atlanta. I ended up going to uh, New York University, Tisch School of the Arts, majoring in theater, um, and I've just performed since then. I've also educated since 2003, um, and uh, that's my journey in a nutshell. Yeah, and this is your debut um, with True Colors. Yes, this is my True Colors debut. Why did debut. you choose acting? As a career path? I actually was a singer first. Um, I, I, I went into school uh, as a vocal major. Mm -hmm. I, I had no knowledge of the stage in that mm -hmm. way. And I was just kind of pointed out uh, by my mentor. He saw something in me and was just like, you need to be on stage. And so um, it was an outlet for me. It gave me the opportunity to sort of free myself up where I didn't necessarily think about uh, how I sounded or mm -hmm. what I looked like, but more so the story that was mm -hmm. being told. And that was a very freeing experience for me as an artist. Got that, got that. And Mr. Ramsey, I want to bring you into conversation. Share your journey with the audience. I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, it was when I was eight years old, the musical Raisin, based on the play Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, came to New Orleans. And I'm sitting in the uh, Performing Arts Center uh, with my mom. And as soon as the lights went up, I was nudging her saying, that's what mm -hmm. I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that was, but whatever they were doing on the stage had an immediate impact on my life. From mm -hmm. there, I went to work for a, a small, one of the first black theater companies in the Southeast called the Free Southern Theater. John O'Neill, Surrett Scott was one of my mentors growing up. I uh, left New Orleans to go to NYU. I'm a graduate alum of NYU, like Maisha. Mm -hmm. Uh, from there, I was in New York uh, working on my craft. I've done a number of Broadway shows. Uh, I had a, a mentor when I was at Dillard University before I transferred to NYU who told me to learn how to write. Mm. Uh, and so I took his advice and I've been sort of honing that craft since. And so okay. this show brings me to Chasing These Blues, brings me to Atlanta for the first time to work with some extraordinary talent. Okay. Um, the story of Chasing These Blues was very fascinating to me. And, 2007, I was in Milwaukee working on a project on the life of Sam Cooke. And I'm sitting in this cafe with uh, the mayor's cultural affairs liaison. Her name is Cecilia Gilbert. And she tells me that 30 miles north of Milwaukee was this small town uh, called Port Washington that had a furniture company that decided to get into recording and producing records as an incentive to sell phonograph cabinets. It had nothing to do with trying to make money from, from the recordings. Okay. They discovered later on uh, and brought in an African-American man by the name of Mayo Williams to help distribute and find talent. They ended up finding some of the most extraordinary blues musicians to walk the face of the planet. And they started recording them uh, and they became profitable. And so for me, the story of Chasing These Blues was one of how this European town began to forge and produce race music in what it was called at the time and distributed it all over the country. To me, blues music, uh, and I say this all the time, is like a roux, you know, in gumbo there's a roux. And blues music has basically influenced every other music and culture in this world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's why we feel this, this project has uh, both historical and entertainment merit. And they have a talent like Maisha uh, McQueen, Brad Raymond, who's another mm -hmm. local talent, mm -hmm. uh, Che Marshall on drums. We're also excited to have uh, the recording artist and Grammy nominated um, singer Anthony David is in the show mm -hmm. with us, and Jeremy Cohen, who's from New York and my musical director. Yeah, nice. Um, so why you? Why did you feel this was your call to, to do this? Uh, 
Every show I write, I never know why I've been called to write it. I never, I, I didn't set out to write Chasing These Blues. I was sitting in a cafe yeah. talking about something else. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a love for history and music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, this, this piece is calling, that's been calling me. And I think this is the first time with, it's been done twice before, uh, once in Milwaukee and then again in Delaware, but there's something magical happening. Uh, as you see with the set, uh, it's all inspired on the works of Romare Bearden, uh, who's a collage artist, painter, mm -hmm. part of the Spiral Group, part of the African Americans in the early 30s and 40s who were pushing the way as visual painters and artists. Uh, he worked with a lot of abstractions. Mm -hmm. And so the blues to me is, is a music that is used to heal mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. right? We, we have been, uh, slavery has done a number on not just black people, it's done a number on, on all of us, and that's evident in what happened in South Carolina mm -hmm. just a few days ago. Right. Whatever that disease is right. called, and I, I, racism is just a name for it, but uh, it's, it's steeped. And what I love about the blues is that it holds up a mirror hmm. for us to look at ourselves. That sound, that sound is everywhere. Yeah. That sound of a mournful cry. Yeah. Uh, that dis-ease. That dis-ease. Yeah. The, the female gospel singer's voice is the most imitated mm. voice in the world. Mm. The most imitated voice in the world, that sound. And you can create the sound, but you can't recreate the experience. Yeah. And we have the experience. They can uh, take your blues and gone. There have been many things written about how our culture has been exploited. Uh, we have allowed that. <laughs> uh, you can't blame anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the creators of so much. So. The piece touches on a lot of things and it celebrates and honors these men and women whose shoulders we're standing on. Um, but it's also, the blues is not just about pain, it's also about dancing that pain right, away and right, singing that pain right. away. And have yeah. a, have a, I, I go back to this sister here, uh, she's become, uh, I guess my artistic uh, muse in a way. Cause she brings, she, we live in the same world. Like I love this thing I do. Uh, it's very precious. It's sacred. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the work we do as artists, and Maisha comes from a, an experience and a background that that she's serious about the work and getting better as an artist. And so we've been having a great time. It's, yeah. been, it's been a really great experience. Share, Maisha. What has this been like? The experience been like for you? It's been absolutely amazing. Um, for this to be sort of. Um, it's my True Colors debut, but I would say that it's also in many ways my professional professional debut i did uh, about 10 years touring with a theater company and um we, we we did a lot of work but this sort of kind of gives me my professional stamp and it has been miraculous mm -hmm. to to have that experience be with this piece with this um artist i i, I could not have written a better a better script mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. myself um it's been extraordinary kevin is is um is everything that any artist would want in a director. Um, he reminds me very much of, of my mentors of the past, um, just in his work ethic and uh, his creativity um, and his love of, of history and pushing us to go as deep as we possibly can. And just as a writer, just the words and the language and biting into that as an artist has been absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Um, he definitely pushes us um, because he knows what this piece needs in order to work, in order to resonate um, with with the audience, we have to be strong storytellers in our bodies, mm -hmm. in our voices, mm -hmm. in our emotions. Um, you know, we have to be that consummate artist. Um, so this has been a challenging experience for me, um, but it has been a, a really special one thus far. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really excited to share it with the audience, particularly in Atlanta, me being from here, mm -hmm. just to see how they, how they take this message. Um, you know, I had someone tell me that every time you step on stage, you're giving the audience a gift. Whatever gift that is, you could decide. And so I'm really interested to see how this audience receives this mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't like to, to put things on the audience. I like to kind of let them do what they what they do mm -hmm, but Atlanta mm -hmm. as you know is a very special city it has a deep history of its mm -hmm. own um, our audience listens um, in a very specific way mm -hmm. um, uh, they deal with history in a very specific way they deal with pain in a very specific way and not to generalize the Atlanta audience but I'm just really excited to see how they internalize what we have to give 
let's speak really specifically about the play itself and, and it being here in Atlanta mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, who is, which character are you and uh, what do you want us to get from that character? I play the character Queen. Um, she is described as an earthy um, woman, uh, sultry, uh, but she's very strong and she, she does a lot of the storytelling. A lot of her storytelling is done through song mm -hmm. um, and movement. Um, and her name, I think, says it all. She, to me, is the embodiment of the, the essence of a black woman. I think in so, so many, um, you know, in so many commercial realms, the black woman is decomplicated. Uh, you know, we're, we, we are decomplicated. And I think that she sort of gives you those stereotypes in a way, but then she breaks them down through the characters that she takes on, mm -hmm. such as Ma Rainey and Alberta mm -hmm. Hunter. She kind of complicates uh, this uh, stereotype, if you will, of, of, a, of, a, of a typical black, bluesy, sultry woman. Um, within the context of this story about this chair company. So there's a lot of things working together. Yeah. Uh, but she plays an integral role for sure. Yeah. And one of the interesting things about, about the piece is that each one of the characters are embodying the lives of 100,000 other people. The, the name of the band that descends into this metaphoric uh, train station. Um, the train station is, is emblematic of the time in which information was spreading around the country before the internet. And so mm -hmm. the piece takes place between the span of 1888 and 1932. Okay. Uh, and the, the characters that, that descend in, in the space are, in my mind, uh, they're called the blues executives. Mm -hmm. They're the caretakers of those mm -hmm. who have gone on before. And so they, they embody it and they're able to morph in and out of many, many spirits that are talking to them through the story of Ma Rainey, uh, Berta Hunter, some of the people who recorded, Sun House, Skip James, Charlie Patton. And so the actors morph in and out of characters as we tell this story through song, yeah. through verse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, through dance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good stuff. As the writer and director of this piece, what is your thing the most that you want us to take away from this experience? <laughs> wow. Uh, that we're standing on the shoulders of many great men and women who have gone unsung and unnoticed, that, that we have a very rich culture, mm -hmm. uh, that the blues is a music to be celebrated, even so much in our own, in the black community. We have uh, disparagingly sort of thrown the blues away as calling it devil's music, but mm -hmm. if you listen mm -hmm. to gospel music, you will hear the blues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just changed yeah, the it word just, Lord the baby. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's that place of yeah. our, we, we as African Americans, uh, we have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, absolutely. Of what we've created. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, we've turned our back on a lot of our culture. Yes. Uh, yeah. in, in a way, it's like there's a line that talks about, uh, and she says it, uh, discarded collard greens. During slavery, they would throw away that part of the greens and we would turn it into a meal. So much mm -hmm. of our history that has been discarded, we have turned into wonderful inventions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and once again, we are, uh, you know, we are the most imitated people in a way on this planet culturally based on what we create. And I'm not making that up. Right. No, no, no. I'm it's not proven. making that yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, and so, but once again, this is a piece is not just for the African American community. The blues is about America, right? Right. And it, we're at a time of, uh, I think, theater has to serve a, much more of a as a place for healing and looking at ourselves mm -hmm. as a society. That's what it was meant to do, right? Mm -hmm. Just to right. have this this discourse. conversation, this discourse. Mm -hmm. right. right. And I think this one is, is there are some moments in here that it gets deep. And that's the part of the play that we're gonna poke at you, and then we're gonna rub you, and then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna caress you. Right, but right, all through right. this beautiful music and the, the the lyrics of blues music is just so simple and direct. There's no gray area mm -hmm. in blues mm -hmm. music. The lyrics are always just they cut to the point. Yeah. Uh, so we're 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 excited yeah, to yeah. be here. So yeah. I just encourage the uh, Atlanta community, man, to come out and to see themselves represented mm -hmm. on stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You want to give us the dates? And then the dates are July 7th. We start previewing. We open on July 10th and we run through August 2nd. Yes. Yeah. Yes. At the uh, Southwest Arts Center 
uh, Kenny Leon's True Colors Theater. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And tickets are available. They're still available. You can visit truecolorstheater.org to get your tickets. And to all, we have a lot of rich history here, a lot of rich experiences here. We only had a few minutes, so go to the website also to read more about these two artists and what they've been involved in, what they're doing, and what's coming down the road for them. I want to thank you too so uh, much for this opportunity, thank you. Yeah, thank and you I so look much. forward to being a part of this experience through at least August the second, no yeah. doubt, and then no beyond doubt. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks thank again. You so thank much. you. My I'm Charlene Bowden. It's just us until next time. Thank you so much.